So you get the RV. And then you find out that you're, you're not, not quite yeah, ready to go. Not ready to go because you need some things. Now it's overwhelming or can be overwhelming to go in the store and look at all the things, the light bulbs and the clips and the rugs and the cleaners and the this chairs. and the that and the chairs and the, there's wants and needs. Uh, so if you're new, it can all be kind of confusing. Today we're going to talk about the RV essentials that you need to get for your new RV here on Home on Hitch. So stick around. Let's go. Hey, my name is Thomas. And I'm Melissa. Welcome to Home on the Hitch. We travel around in our RV trying to find ways to make every moment count. Because tomorrow is not guaranteed. If this sounds like you or you're interested in RV travel, then hang out with us for a little while and let us answer some questions for you. All right guys, so RV essentials. And what we're talking about are the things that you really need to have to enjoy yourself in your new camper. This is by no means a comprehensive list. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of things you're gonna buy. Uh, but just to kind of help with some of the confusion right out of the gate, uh, these are the things that you're gonna need to have. You can go to our webpage, www.homeonthehitch.com forward slash RV education, and you're gonna find some checklist downloads, uh, and this RV Essentials uh, checklist is gonna be up there as well. So you can go there and download that uh, just to, to have on hand. So, all right, let's get started. So we'll start with the water. Uh, so you're gonna hook up to the park water at your RV park. Uh, you always, always, always wanna have a pressure regulator. And this is the kind of pressure re regulator that you're gonna need to get. Now you'll see uh, a different kind of just round brass regulator um, that you're gonna see in the stores. And those are okay if that's all you got. Um, but those are, it's more of a flow restrictor uh, and not an actual pressure regulator. Uh, these are not much more expensive and you can actually adjust the pressure uh, of the water that's going into your rig. You don't ever want that to be like super, super high. The park that we go to in North Carolina has like a pressure at the spigot of almost 100 PSI. So that would most certainly rupture the pipes in your RV. So we can crank it down to like 50 or 55 with this. Always got to have a good pressure regulator and you can find that on our webpage as well. Freshwater hoses. You're going to need at least one 25 foot freshwater hose, probably two of those. I carry a 50 foot flexible uh, freshwater hose as well as an extra uh, 25 foot one. Uh, they are going to be blue and marked blue for potable water. So that is drinking water safe. And you don't ever want to store those anywhere close to anything that could contaminate them. But you're definitely going to have to have drinking water hoses. Uh, along with that, you're going to need another set of hoses, uh, at least one uh, in a different color. Uh, this one is by Rhino, and it is for flushing the black tank or rinsing any of the black tank fittings or the sewer fittings or sewer hoses. So you want to make sure you have a hose designated for that and always use that hose for that. Never use this hose for drinking water. So again, remember, this is just an essentials basic list. There's a lot of other things you can get for the water uh, systems in your RV as far as filters and everything like that. We're not talking about that right now. We're talking about just the essentials. All right. Uh, Moving on past that, you're going to need to have the slinky. That's right, the stinky slinky. Now this is a 10 foot sewer hose section. Uh, you're going to need to at least carry three of these uh, because you never know how far away the sewer connection is going to be from where you park your rig. Um, sometimes the when you buy your RV, the dealerships will include a really, really cheap section of sewer hose uh, that does not have any ends on it. And you have to like put the ends on it with a clamp. Don't use those. Just do yourself a favor. Just go to one of the stores, Walmart, any of the RV stores and buy a pack of uh, the sewer 
uh, connection kit, sometimes they're labeled. It's gonna have two 10-foot hoses uh, with the ends and the caps, the elbows. It's gonna have the connection that's gonna screw into the uh, sewer inlet at the RV park. Uh, it may or may not have an elbow to connect to your bayonet fitting on your RV. Uh, but you can save a lot of time and make sure you get everything you need if you just go and buy one of those kits and you can buy extra hose uh, at the same time and be all set up. And these typically will store in your RV bumper, but one thing that happens to them when you store them in the bumper is a lot of times they get rust streaks on them. Just pro tip, we store these in a tote uh, with all the sewer connections and we keep it separate from everything else. But you've got to have some type of sewer connections uh, to be able to use the plumbing in your RV at an RV park. Uh, if you're going to take showers or you're going to use the toilet and dump the black tank, if you're going to use the kitchen sink, you've got to have a sewer connection to dump that tank. So make sure you get yourself a sewer hose kit. All right, guys. So moving on from that, we're going to start talking about the electrical now. There's a few essentials that are very important for your electrical system in your RV. The number one is going to be some type of surge protection. Don't plug into a pedestal at a campground without first plugging it in with some type of circuit analyzer slash surge protector. Uh, there are numerous out there, uh, depending on how much you want to spend and how much you can afford. Some are hardwired in to your rig and permanent there, some are not. Um, but you need something that at least some form of protection against campground power surges or pedestals that are wired incorrectly. So what we use currently right now is this, sur this surge guard right here. And we always use that between our camper and whatever power source we're plugged into. Uh, that is by no means the most expensive one you can buy. It is surely not. Uh, but it is some sort of protection. Uh, always make sure you have some type of surge protection plugged in there. Moving on with the electrical, it's always a good idea to carry a few extension cords. You never know if you're going to be plugging in fans or anything like that outside. So always have a few extension cords. Uh, as well, you're going to need some dog bone adapters. This is one. It is a 50 amp and it adapts, turns it into a 30 amp plug. So if the campground that you are at only has a 50 amp, or excuse me, only has a 30 amp service, then you can plug your camper into this and then plug this into the service at the campground and still get power. You're not gonna get the full 50 amps that you're capable of in your rig, but at least you're able to adapt it. Uh, with that, you can also, get a plug that will adapt from 30 amp down to a standard household plug. That's for if you, you know, maybe you're mooch docking or camping in somebody's driveway and you're just going to get power for lights or something like that. Then you can plug that in there, uh, plug this into your RV. And next thing you know, now you can plug this into a household cord and get, you know, 15 amps so make sure that you have extension cords and dog bone adapters so if your rig is equipped with cable tv which most of them are now make sure that you have a good uh, roll of coaxial cable that is digital rated um, you can get plain old coaxial cable uh, that a lot of times won't work at some of these parks if what they have is digital cable. So just make sure that you have a coaxial uh, and it will say on there, it'll be printed, it says digital satellite cable, RG6. So make sure it's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but that's the one you want because that's the one that's gonna work at most of the parks. Leveling blocks, you need leveling blocks. Now these come in usually in like packs of 10 or packs of 20 uh, you can find them sometimes grab one or two packs of these because you don't ever know if you're going to be 
somewhere that might be a little unlevel and it's really easy just to kind of park up on these another thing that these are good for is to put underneath your stabilizer jacks now if you're working with like a fifth wheel that has a, an automatic level up system or something like that it's still a great idea to have these because you can stack these up underneath those jacks and they don't have to go down quite as far uh, sometimes maybe the back of the side or the front of the site might be drastically different than the other side and you might need to put these under there so the jack can act, will actually have enough travel to to accomplish leveling so it's always a good idea to have some leveling blocks um, must have those another thing you're going to need to have is wheel chocks we use these x chocks um, we love them helps keep everything stable and secure you don't have to use those but you do need to have some type of wheel chalk in place anytime you stop and you park your camper especially if you're going to unhook you've got to have wheel chocks so make sure you can have the rubber blocks that go behind in front and in front of the tires or you can get some type of x shock like we use uh, but make sure you have some type of wheel chalk so moving on on the rv essentials checklist tools you got to have tools to do basic repairs uh, you need to be set up to change a tire you need to be able to as well you need to have the tools to work on whatever type of hitch system you have be it for your travel trailer or for your fifth wheel you need to make sure that you have the tools to work on the hitch uh, to be able to change the tires you can get just a basic uh, hand tool kit that has basic sockets and wrenches some type of either impact driver as well as a, a cordless drill driver you want to make sure you have those available and the batteries and the chargers uh, because you never know when you're going to have to make repairs on the road all right so let's go inside and talk to mail about some things you need to have inside all right, so I'm gonna go over some RV essentials that you need inside. So we're gonna start with the kitchen. Um, of course, you're gonna need some basic pots and pans. Um, just to start with, I would recommend um, just a skillet, something to boil some water in, a couple little pots to cook in, great. You're gonna need a couple of uh, baking trays. Different sizes work out really well. Um, these are great for taking food in and, in and out to the to the picnic table or campfire or whatever. Um, Multi-use items are great. So of course you're not going to want to forget your pot holders. Uh, you're going to need just a basic array of your regular cooking utensils, you know, a spatula, some tongs, um, paper towels. Always need paper towels. You're also going to need about, about four or six um, dish towels to start out with. That's a good number. Make sure you have some measuring cups. Um, and other essentials such as scissors, a bottle opener, because you know you don't want to be without your bottle opener, and a can opener. And if you're like me in the morning, you're going to have to have your coffee. So make sure that you have your means of coffee pot, um, however way you choose to make your coffee in the morning. Just make sure you take that because you're going to want that. Okay, so some other RV essentials you're going to need are plates and silverware. So get yourself some plasticware and make sure you just get an assortment of regular silverware. These little plastic trays from the dollar store work out great for keeping things organized in the drawers. And of course, don't forget your cups, some plastic cups, paper cups, insulated cups, whatever your preference is. Um, I like the disposable. It tends to be a little easier. All right. So now let's talk about the toilet. Well, let's talk about the toilet. Because you know, everybody's curious about what happens in the bathroom. What happens in the RV toilet? Should stay in the RV toilet. Should stay in the RV toilet. <laughs> All right. So if you have any extra ideas that we're not talking about, make sure you put those in the comments below so everybody can see. All right. Toilet time. Email. <laughs> okay. So. 
You have to have toilet paper. They make RV friendly toilet paper. This is supposed to dissolve quickly and be safer for your RV use. Now that is a personal preference, but toilet paper is a must. And you're gonna need chemicals for your toilet um, just to deal with the black tank issues. So you get yourself some chemicals. And uh, we also use this RV Digest It, which helps to break down the toilet paper. So some other safety essentials that you're gonna need um, in general for your RV experience is going to be some light. These come in very handy. Right. So these, these are just some options to your standard lights, like flashlight. So Thomas is, it, Thomas is showing you the headlamp mm -hmm. model. All right, and then we have these cute little lanterns that pop up and will hang anywhere. These are very handy, indoor, yeah. outdoor. Flashlights, you need lighting. You absolutely do. And you will need something just in case. Yep. First aid kit. You need a first aid kit. Now, you know, just a basic first aid kit is really good because you're going to need something for Band-Aid. You're going to need, you're going to need something for Band-Aids. Somebody's going to get hurt. So, you're going to need something Probably just... Probably be me. <laughs> you're going to need something just in case. So, a small first aid kit is ideal. Something that's going to take care of all the little bumps and scratches that happen along just the way. Just make sure you got, you know... Over-the-counter stuff, you know, for stings and bites and all kinds of stuff like that. So, All right, so in the bedroom, uh, you're going to want to, of course, have your bedding. But I also recommend that you carry a, a extra set of sheets for, you know, just in case. All right, so you're also going to need some towels. I would recommend four to six to start with. And that's um, hand towels, bath towels, and washcloths. So besides towels, you're going to want to make sure that you have all of your bathroom accessories such as shampoo, conditioner, toothpaste, toothbrushes, those sort of things are going to be essential. All right guys, so we hope this helps. This is just, like I said, a basic list of RV essentials that you were going to want to get uh, before you go on your first trip after you get your RV, you're going to come, you're going to find out what other things that you want to have. Right. This is a, not a definite. This is definitely not a all-inclusive list. Just something to get you started. Absolutely. Uh, as well on top, you're going to want uh, some basic outdoor seating, some outdoor chairs and stuff like that uh, to have so you can sit around the campfire ring uh, or just sit outside and eat if there doesn't have to be a picnic table or something like that. Uh, again, this list is going to be up on our website. It's going to be www.homeonhitch.com forward slash RV education. It's going to have all our downloads up there uh, and our list for RV essentials. So uh, make sure you subscribe. Give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment. Absolutely. Yeah. Let us know what you think. If we forgot anything that you think is essential, put it in the comments below. So until then, take care of each other, love each other. And make every moment count. And we'll see you next time, guys. Bye.